very long time. I had my full name spelt and also pronounced correctly. That was Hussein Taufik Imam. Because by now, I have forgotten myself that my name is Hussein Taufik Imam. People call me HT, who are very good friends. Otherwise, I'm known as HT Imam. Thank you for reminding me the full name. The discussion that the subject that was given to me, it was only about two, three days back, my very dear nephew, Nahim Razak, he came to me and he said that this is what we are organizing. I didn't have much of idea about the ORF and I know BIIS very well because we have close ties with them, but the organization of ORF, the wonderful work that they are doing and together in Bangladesh for the first time, organizing an, an event like this is something that uh, really is praiseworthy. Congratulations to all of you. In early 1972, uh, a very renowned gentleman, he called Bangladesh, I quote, an international basket case. Today, his disciples are marveling at the remarkable turnaround we have met. How could Bangladesh achieve this? My reply is simple. The remarkable growth rate that has been achieved by Bangladesh is essentially ideology driven. The ideologies that have been instilled in us by the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman the father of the nation dreamt of a free, independent, and sovereign Bangladesh in response to his call, in response to his call, and under his leadership, people of his, this land, irrespective of age, sex, caste, religion, profession, education, joined the war and defeated the enemy. That's why we called it uh, the People's War. But the nation had to pay it an enormous price for it, as you know. Bangladesh's dream was not just an independent country. He wanted the emancipation of the deprived and oppressed people of this land. Time and again, he called for a struggle for freedom of the people in the truest sense. On the 7th of March, 1971, his final address to the nation before launching the war, he uttered, I quote, this time the struggle is for independence, this time the struggle is for emancipation. Evare Shangram, Shadinata Shangram, Evare Shangram, Mukti Shangram. His vision was not just independence, but for freedom in the real sense. He had seen and felt the agonies of the people, of the poor people and deprived population of Bangladesh, and he wanted to uplift them out of poverty, give them a decent life, providing for all the basic requirements. It was Bangamandu's dream, grand vision, that propelled the nation to the situation we have today. The freedom of and or emancipation and the democracy of the oppressed, as he said, Shoshiter Ganatantra, people that Bangabandhu often talked about and his party, Aam League, cherished and upheld were all enshrined in the constitution. And I'm very proud that I belong to that party. May I have a glass of water, please? 
he and his co-warriors framed a constitution which enshrined the realization of Bangamundu's dream for a poverty-free, exploitation-free, hunger-free, healthy, modern, and technology-based nation. You might uh, refer to the Constitution, Articles 11 to 20. During his very short three and a half years' time, Bangamundu laid the foundation of the state. I am very proud that during those three and a half years, I had the honor and privilege of working very closely with Bangabundhu. I had seen what, he, what a person he was and what kind of Bangladesh he dreamt about, what kind of society that he thought we should be able to set up. Unfortunately, the military rulers who usurped the state power had thrown away the constitution and did whatever they could to roll the country back to pre-independence days, that is to the Pakistan days. Since her, since her return to Bangladesh in 1981, the illustrious daughter of Mangabundu launched movement for the restoration of democracy and people's rights, what she called, called right to vote and right to eat, Bhat among Bhutir, Plurai. With her party leaders and think tanks, she started planning for a prosperous Bangladesh to realize Bangabundu's dreams in 1996. Amli came, came to power under the leadership of Sheikh Hasina and immediately embarked on a massive development program across the board that was people-oriented and forward-looking. Back in power, again in 2009, she presented a long-term development plan called Vision 2021 and a digital Bangladesh. Food security, infrastructure, special programs for the poor, women and the disadvantaged were given sp special thrust. All this led to realization of the MDG goals. And incidentally, she was one of the very early signatories to the MDG goals in the United Nations. The present government commenced its third term in office in January this year after achieving a landslide victory in the 11th national election. Its popular mandate was due to the solid social economic progress achieved by the country during the last two ter terms. Bangladesh has achieved a remarkable 8.13% GDP growth in the fiscal year 2018-19. Now, there are number of quotations here, numbers given, figures also provided, but uh, what I wanted to em emphasize is, away from the written text, is that the party, Bangladesh Army League, under the leadership of Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman first, and later on under her, her daughter, under his daughter, uh, we have always been thinking of the or ordinary people. What can we do? What can we achieve? Because we had seen the oppression, we had seen the repression, we had seen the deprivation under the Pakistan days. And then later on, under the initial days of our own people. 
And because of this, the party had always developed itself into several think tanks, group committees, uh, educationists for education, agricultural leaders for thinking in agriculture, those who dealt with agricultural development, industrialists, uh, even capitalists, all kinds of people, they were brought in, irrespective, even many of them were not members of the party, but we wanted to benefit from their common knowledge, their common wisdom, and chart out a future for the nation as a whole. And that came from the same thing. What Bangabandhu said in his address in the Sadhinata Shangram, Muktir Shangram. The independence was achieved. What was Mukti? Mukti was freedom from hunger, freedom from deprivation, freedom from lack of shelter, freedom from illiteracy, freedom from uh, lack of health, all of this. So consider taking all of these chunks separately and then bringing them together, we saw a vision. And the vision, you see, as Bangabandhu had said, now I'm coming to his, the uh, final vision. He thought of Sonar Bangla, Golden Bengal, which was, which inspiration he got from our great poet, Rabindranath Tagore, Sonar Bangla. And Sonar Bangla is not literally wrapping the country with Shona or with gold, but having people who are really golden, people who have the genius, people who have the courage, people who have the patriotism, the nationalism, and people who can see forward, looking beyond the horizon. You cannot take a country forward. You cannot can take, even individually, if you don't have ambition, you can't do anything in life. Even in a family, if you don't have ambition for your children, if you don't tell them, and, or they themselves don't see the future for themselves, they don't grow. It's, it's exactly for the country also, for the nation also. This is what Bangabandhu did. He instilled in us that we are a great nation, we have long history, we have our own culture, we have our literature, and we are a separate nation with our own identity. Now let us look forward and take that nation forward. And for that reason, you see, even uh, you will be surprised that during the War of Liberation in 1971, in nine months' time, before Bangabandhu was imprisoned, he left orders and also instructions with his comrades that even during the war, you must prepare for the future. So much so that in 1971, while fighting the enemy in the front, leading the Mukti Bahini, to the uh, different sectors, organizing the army, organizing the Air Force, the Navy, even, even during the war, even in those days, Bangladesh government, the government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, that was, that started its journey on the 10th of April, 1971, immediately after the declaration of the proclamation of independence, the, the government set up Several, several organizations. And I'm happy, very happy to state that in those early days, we got not only help from India from the, in the uh, war front for the refugees, but also we had some of the best Indian minds working with us for the future Bangladesh, We should be ready for rehabilitation after the return of the refugees, 10 million people, and then rehabilitation, rebuilding the country, but also 
having our own five year plans. And that is precisely the reason why immediately after the liberation, when Mangamandu came back, he set up the first uh, planning commission. And the first five year plan was drawn up. From that time onwards, in between there were, as, is, as I said, during the military rule and also anti-people anti government, there were changes, there were pulls and pushes to take us back. But at the end, the people's will survived, people's will came, was supreme and we could, with the help of the people, as the father of the nation had seen, Mangamandu's daughter, she also saw the same vision, vision 2021. Where shall we take Bangladesh? What kind of Bangladesh do we want to see in 2021? And the vehicle for that, she found out, was making the country digital. Digital Bangladesh is nothing but education, technology-oriented, and modern technology-based society that will take us forward. So at the same time, the basic thing, as we said, providing the people with food, the food security was the first thing that we started with. Even in 19, between 96 and 2001, Bangladesh, during the five-year short term of uh, Sheikh Hasina's first term, Bangladesh became self-sufficient in food. And the power supply increased. Gradually, she had, she laid down the foundation with which Bangabandhu started. It was Bangabandhu who rebuilt the country in, seven, in just three and a half years' time. He not only rebuilt the country physically through its infrastructure, but it was the government which was most important. He set up the government. Everything that you see today in Bangladesh, the government machinery, the state machinery, the departments, the divisions, the, uh, the organizations, even intelligence organizations, military organizations, all were set up. I say without exception, all were set up and all were the brainchild of the father of the nation. And it is our great fortune that it is her, his daughter who took over the government and took it forward and she is taking it forward exactly the same way as her father would have done. And that is the, the secret of Bangladesh's miracle. Have I taken too long a time? Mr. Moderator, how much time do I have left? Okay. I'll very quickly mention some of the highlights of our development. One is, uh, as you know, the macroeconomic uh, figures and the other developments are all, all known to you. One uh, very significant thing that we have achieved is foreign direct investment. Uh, there are economists here. They have the, all the data that it can be provided. But one very important thing that we have achieved is the reduction in poverty and inequality. One very important thing in Bangladesh is that along with the, the trajectory of growth on which Bangladesh is on, and along with achieving the very high rate of growth, Bangladesh has been able to maintain with its very capable monetary policy, fiscal policy, the inflation rate has always been brought down. It has never been allowed to go beyond five. The result is the, the excess, the resources that have been generated have gone to the rural areas. I can tell you myself, Please don't be surprised. 
almost 80 years back in the villages of Bangladesh. I can talk, talk of my own village. You see, the children didn't have anything to wear. Ladies didn't have more than one sari, and they didn't know anything else other than a sari to wear. People in general didn't have shoes, not to talk of shoes, they went barefooted. Very few children could go to the schools. Today you go to the villages, my own village, I can't see it, I can't really think of that village again because all the, the thatched houses, even the tin sheds are gone. There are all buildings, paka roads, and the small villages, industries humming with in industrial activities. It's very well known for the sari, you see, the cottage industries. And the inequality that usually takes place when you go on a rapid, uh, when you go forward very rapidly and uh, in an industrial society, there are hiccups, there are problems, and some people become too rich, which in, in fact Bangl in Bangladesh also has happened. But fortunately, we have been able and that is the most important thing. We have been able to uh, distribute the resources to the villages as well. The villages have thrived and literacy and education have, have spread. The education policy of the government, we have been discussing about it. And the one thing that makes me really very proud is our very solid achievement in the social safety net programs. Today, in Bangladesh, you will see there are so many programs for the disadvantaged, for the poor, even for the lactating mothers, for uh, the handicaps, even abundant uh, parents, all of them. There are so many other programs in Bangladesh, which is really something that is taking us forward. And of course, the empowerment of women, that is something that we are really proud of. In Bangladesh today, in the primary schools, the girl students outnumber boys. Primary school teachers, they outnumber male teachers. Even in medical colleges, the girl students outnumber boys. What else ladies do you want? And about the social safety net that I mentioned about, I'll just say something, uh, mention a few. One is old age allowance, women abandoned by husbands or children, handicapped allowance, freedom fighter allowance, lactating mother allowance, free education for girls, books free of cost, vaccination, and home for everyone. One thing that I would, I cannot resist mentioning, in Bangladesh, in order to induce the mothers of girl students to send their girls to schools, we have introduced something new, a very new idea. That is, the, not only the girls are given stipends, but their mothers are given stipends. And you would be surprised that the stipends that are given to the mothers, the total number, do you know how many? 12 million mothers in Bangladesh today get stipends from the government, not through checks, not through banks, but online. That is the highlight. Thank you so very much. Assalamu alaikum.